First of all, I'm Mark Walker. I'm the general manager of Zipcar's UK operation. Um, and in case anyone doesn't know, what we do is um, we are now the UK's largest pay-as-you-drive car network. And what we found with our business customers is that um, they really value um, the fact that our service is so convenient for them, it's very cost-effective for them, and it's very flexible. In today's business world, um, people have to move fast to have impact and to get ahead of competition. We have thousands of businesses using the Zipcar for business service now, so we decided to partner with Startup Britain and with Ashridge Business School to conduct some rigorous research that puts that hypothesis to the test. <laughs> Is that a mindset that's out there everywhere these days? Um, if so, let's, def let's define it quite clearly and ultimately um, let's produce a smart business blueprint, that's the kind of the name we've attributed to it, um, that becomes a reference for any would-be entrepreneur about to embark on their own business journey. I think for me it's definitely that sense of creation, it's um, you know, bringing something into this world that wasn't there yesterday. Um, and also, yeah, I think it comes back to that sort of sense of uh, frustration. You see a problem in the world and you go, you know, why isn't this being fixed and why isn't someone solving this now? And then you kind of, kind of realise, well, you can actually do something about this yourself. You can get started today and, you know, go out in the world and put a product out there to kind of fix that, at least one of many pain points around the world today. Because you pick a marketplace that's done it that way for hundreds of years yeah. and to suit them. And on their payment terms, on all of their terms, and I love the, the ability just to pick that marketplace, and I'm not an accountant, to steam in there, and it's na the, the naivety really, steaming in there um, has been really invigorating, but then it's been scary as well to see the backlash, uh, uh, which has you know, given me uh, probably a bit more energy as well. My number one piece of advice to anyone starting a business is get something in front of yeah. potential customers as quickly as you possibly can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get to 80%, bash it out. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's that area of what we don't know that you don't know, so let's not have a preconceived idea about the best way to do things or how things should look. Let's have a, a vision of where we want to be, but be prepared to take whatever path it takes to get there in the best, most efficient way. Yeah, yeah. Accepting that it may not look the way that you think that it ought. So that creates an agility of creativity, I find. And I would say, trust your gut, but listen to your clients. <laughs> I think it's Gore-Tex in the States, builds a, a, you know, a factory, uh, and they have 150 car parking spaces. Yeah. And the management are indistinguished from the normal employees. They don't have posh offices. They mix in. And as soon as the management team see people actually parking on the grass verges, they build another, another place down the road for 150 staff. So I, I really honestly believe we're going to get to a point, certainly when we go over 100, I think that's, that's getting too big. Yeah. Uh, and I, I want to try and create little, I don't know what to call them, uh, units uh, of people where they're self-sufficient. They have their own Christmas parties, the best way to describe it. Yeah. The way that we run our team is everybody has the right to say whatever they feel they need to say at any time. So there's, ne there's never an acceptance of anything. If someone wants to question something, they can question it. What it gives us the ability to do is to solve problems very quickly. But th that creativity and that freedom of expression and thought gives us the ability to solve those problems very, very fast and implement them very fast as well. It's allowing someone to fail, but fail well. You know, if, if I have no problem for anyone working for me at the moment or before, if they went out with a well thought out plan, well, and it just for reasons X, Y, and Z, it didn't work. It's something that I try and instill in people that, are, that work for me now. Even it's, it's no problem to fail, it's fine. So long as there's reasonable thought <coughs> process in there and you learn from it and move on. So there's a massive willingness to collaborate much more these days. There used to be this terrible expression, is it possession is nine tenths the law? Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that is totally inapplicable to our business. You don't have to be, our people don't have to be owned by an organisation and to be really, really successful. Premiership football clubs, they lend players to each other. As long as they don't play against their host club, it's a, sort of, it's a collaboration. And it's much, much better to collaborate. The other thing that we're experiencing with our business is because of the communication revolution that exists globally now, with Twitter and Facebook and internet, 
Um, what that's created for us is massive expansion, very, very fast. And it's a bit like, I said, it's a bit like hanging on the back of a motorbike doing 100 mile an hour with a throttle jammed open. <laughs> and you're desperately spending all your time trying to get up on the saddle so you can actually shut the engine off. But when people tweak what it is you're doing and they go, I really like that, I want to do that, demand goes like this, and you've got to try and keep up with that. And that's the biggest challenge we've got at the moment, to be honest. talent perspective is, is like whatever your budget is for recruiting somebody, uh, an A-class person is, is going to do, um, you know, it may cost 20-30% more, but it's going to do 10 times as much yeah. than, than a B-class person. So I think when you are bringing talent in, and it's, it is a core thing, um, you know, if, you're, if, if one is ever deciding about whether you can afford to, to stretch yourself, whilst yes it costs more, the, the returns are going to be substantially greater. So the entrepreneur is the rock star of today, and even MTV yeah. have acknowledged that that's the case. Um, and I think what you're finding is that now people are leaving university, or dropping out of university, to become entrepreneurs, versus necessarily just wanting to work for a startup. I think more and more, more of them want to just do it themselves. <coughs> Initially, give shareholdings away, get them really sold into the mission, yeah. and then they work for, you know, a sixth of that ordinary salary. Like back in Pier 360, uh, the guy was a contractor in the city and he was used to 150k a year and I got him in uh, and he lived around the corner in Brighton uh, and I got him in and this, the, the, uh, I'm not kidding, £600 a month is all I could afford in my yeah. first startup yeah. and he worked for six months like that. If you're right at the beginning as a startup and you've got no money and it's more, you need more than just you, people aren't going to obviously come for the money so they're going to come for the vision of the business and what you're trying to create and the challenges and, and pushing the buttons that that work for them. You don't join a business you think, oh yeah, they're okay. You know, you don't leave your job to go and join something that's mediocre. You go because you're excited about the role, the opportunity, extending yourself, learning and being part of something. So if you can lead with a vision, and whether it's a big company or a small company, you'll get people buying into that and hopefully buying into the role. My, my belief is that you must have the knowledge in-house on everything. And we have, so I think it's 15 going on 16 uh, enterprise Java banking grade developers, and it must be retained in-house. Data, in my opinion, is the biggest key thing. I think most of us certainly, three of us, and this is the table, all, our, our, all our KPIs are live. Um, I mean, you, you, you and yourself as well. Um, and data has transformed the industry we're particularly in. You're not limited to traditional media channels like newspapers or television like you used to be. It's very easy to set up a Google ad, for instance. Uh, there are all these channels that you can actually get to people. Twitter, Facebook, these can do a lot of the hard work for you as well, which means it becomes a lot che cheaper and simpler to actually launch a new product. So the biggest barrier to new innovation is old innovation because um, it's the same point. I mean, we're trying to innovate in a world and sell to people who've just been doing it their way for such a long time. And, and we're just un beginning to unpeel them, but we're doing it one by one. And, and once you get a, some momentum, it's a great moment. I've worked before, um, Funding Circle Days came from a background of working very closely with the banks or in the banks, and it's just unreal the bureaucracy and, and how stagnated the whole process is. You know, you can't push a change through in less than 12 months, and even then you're sitting there saying, well, when's the next window for tech resource? And you know, projects across the business are backed up. Whereas, you know, a small startup, you're you're sitting there. You can from day to day we change what priorities we have in the business for tech or whatever it might be that we need to respond to. So. Yeah, it's like a massive battleship there, and we're like in our little dinghy. And <laughs> exactly. You've got staff; their motivation is different to yours. I mean, they're not they're not acting in the way that you expect them to, and I'm, I'm the worst culprit for this. You have to sit back and think, well, hang on a minute, your your life depends on this. Theirs doesn't. This is a job, and and you just have to make them make that determination be part of the fun of the job. You can't force it on them in the same way as you force it on yourself. It's a natural instinct to do everything brilliantly, the, the big jobs, the small jobs, everything, you know, you've got a control freak and perfectionist and I think it's just about um, picking the things that really it is important to do perfectly and then picking the things that you need to be a pragmatist about and say, look, actually, it doesn't matter, get the job done really quickly, get it off my plate because, you know, you've only got so many hours in the day, you've only got so much resource and, you know, you kill yourself trying to do everything really well, <laughs> you just won't get it done.
I want the customer service to be so good and the technology is so good and the accountant's expertise is so good, I, I don't want them to be customers, I want them to be fans of us. Mm -hmm. And if they're fans, then they propagate it using you know, these new, the new channels, the social, the social media channels, and, and, and recommend and recommend. We're always recruiting. I mean, and, um, whenever I'm speaking yeah. to anyone, we might not have a role at the moment, but the people yeah. before the role, you, mm. you look at organisations with their, their, their rigid structure, structure and we're going to go and find this person in Q4 or whatever else. If you, you meet that person, it might not be, now might, might not be the moment, but in three months' time, six months' time, 12 months' time, you've identified and said, that guy's going to come and work for me. Mm -hmm and be part of the team. So yeah. just constantly having your eyes and ears open and just meeting people all the time, whether that ends up as a client, as a, as a, a friend, or as a, as a future employee.